Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I'm back with another video. Uh, I kind of wanted to go over how the iRule application is able to um, issue RS-232 control to the Samsung EX Link module that's included with the vast majority of the new uh, Samsung TVs. So essentially what happened is I, I sent an email off to uh, Samsung support and asking asked them about uh, all of their you know, ask them to provide a full, um, you know, comprehensive list of all of the different RS-232 commands that can be implemented with uh, any application. And so Samsung responded with this PowerPoint presentation that's a pretty decent compilation of not only the code, the commands, but some nice tools to, uh, you know, generate your, your hexadecimal uh, codes that you need and your checksums. So you don't need to be any kind of mathematical wizard to try and figure that stuff out. Um, you know, the frustrating part about this whole deal is, you know, iRule does a really good job with a nice base set of RS-232 commands. They implement pretty much, I'd probably say 90, 95% of all the, all the options. Uh, the problem is that Samsung does not expose 100% of their RS-232 commands that, uh, you know, would be, you know, one-to-one -one for the options and commands in, that you would find on the remote. You know, things like their uh, colored function keys, you know, A, B, C, D, uh, those those buttons, uh, things like a, actually a numeric keypad. You know, you you can't go into iRule and throw you know digits zero through nine on your on your panel and then map digits to them because that doesn't work. Essentially, what you need to do if you want to change your channel is you actually need to implement channel buttons where I want to go to a specific channel, click the button, and it will implement, it will then send that hexadecimal code for the whole channel. Um, obviously, if you're doing a single-digit channel, it should work. But uh, if you're doing a double-digit or triple-digit channel, it's, it's kind of a doesn't really work all that well. So let's just get into it real quick here. Uh, run down the the uh, PowerPoint slide. Uh, they just kind of give you a good overview of you know what the EXLink port looks like, what the uh, what the form factor is. You know, it's a three and a half inch millimeter, or three and a half inch, three and a half millimeter plug. You know, it's a two, three contact tip ring and ground. You know, it's, it'll show you all seven bytes of the hexadecimal code. This is the format that it's expected to receive, so it can actually take action on the command. Um, you know, byte number seven here, the, the checksum is typically the most difficult thing to calculate because you have to do a tooth complement of all the previous six bytes combined and figure that out. So, and as we'll see as we scroll down a little bit farther, you know, they have embedded spreadsheets and applications that help you calculate these values and determine what to use to actually send the right command off. So we'll, we'll get into this spreadsheet in, in just a few minutes here. Uh, here's what your pinout looks like for the 3.5 millimeter to DB9 adapter. It's, uh, you can go to samsungparts.com to find this. It's just, like I said, it's a standard 3.5 millimeter to DB9. You can also find that same thing on Amazon. You know, the system was a little bit more expensive. The uh, Samsung one used to be more, but it's a pretty decent price now, uh, less than 12 bucks. So you can go to either to get it. It's no big deal. Uh, let's see here. And there's that. There's an old interface to their uh, to their uh, simulator. And then, you know, typically you use the simulator with the EXLink module plugged in directly to your laptop or desktop, you know, with the DB9 female to male connection, and then you simply connect to it and you send the command that you want, and the TV should do what you need. But uh, I do not have a TV near my near me right now, so we'll just be doing it directly in iRule and testing it that way. So this page is, has a spreadsheet that's embedded that. Uh, it has a listing of all the different uh, compatible TVs that these commands should work with. Um, and here's the new interface for the new simulator. And as you can see, more embedded files. These Excel spreadsheets, they actually have the, the raw hexadecimal for all the different uh, options, that uh, all the different codes here that uh, the simulator shows. It's just got them in an Excel format. So what this tutorial is going to kind of focus on is going to a direct channel. 
right? So uh, here in the middle, middle of the screen, you've got a spot to input the channel that you want to use. Um, and as, as you can see here, you've got your first command, but the two subcommands and the actual value are uh, blank. So those are all going to fill themselves in when you fill in your channel number, right? So if I plug in 55, 55 is HGTV in my uh, viewing area. I choose HGTV because my wife loves to watch it. So figure why not. So if you click channel, it's going to give you some gobbledygook here in the message box, but then it's going to populate the rest of the commands as a value. 37 is, this is the hexadecimal representation of the decimal value 55. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this together with the tooth complement calculator. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to take, like it just says here, enter commands 1, 2, 3, and value. This is an encoding sheet in the blue area. So we're going to take all four of these guys. Command 1, 2, 3, value. So we're going to take 4 is already in command 1, 0 is already in command 2, 0 is already in command 3. But if these were different values, you would plug those in here. Value is the one that we need to change. So we'll just take value, plug in 37 here. No. 37. Okay, so what that did is it populated uh, this whole hexadecimal string here. And the most important piece is this checksum. This checksum uh, is going to be is, is the part that most people get hung up on to be able to actually get these RS-232 commands to work properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to go across here, we're going to copy it, and then I'm going to bring up the iRule interface here, the iRule builder. All right. What we're going to do is, I've already got all my devices added here. If you don't know how to add a device, you know, um, iRule's got to, you know, tutorials on how to do all that. So what we're just going to do is we're just going to jump in to my RS-232. So as you can see, there's quite a few commands already implemented that they've taken off of uh, the spec and put in here. It's a pretty decent start. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to add a new code to represent the HGTV value that we just uh, calculated. So it comes over device code 104 over on the left here. We'll give this a name or we'll channel HGTV and we will paste the hexadecimal code in the data. What we need to do is we need to uh, dress this up a little bit. So all these leading zeros, uh, this, this hexadecimal code is read as 0 by 8, 0 by 22, etc, etc. What we need to do is we need to take off the leading digit and we need to put it between the X and the other digits here and then lead with a slash, remove the zero. You want everything to be a byte. It's on a byte uh, a boundary, right? So two digits equals one byte in hexadecimal. Each one of these guys is four bits. So this is actually the binary value two, the binary value two. If you, uh, if you put this together and you concatenate it, it's going to be a completely different number than 22. Uh, so we take out the leading zero, we put the leading zero back, take out the leading zero, put the leading zero back, and then take out the leading zero, put the leading zero back, take out the leading zero, it's already one byte, two digits, so I don't need to put it back, that guy there, take out the leading zero, and you have to hit enter for it to take the command. All right. Now we're going to do is go to images. I've already got this guy here. Uh, they have a decent, uh, decent selection of channel images and buttons. So this guy is not going to be highlighted because he has no commands tied to him, and he's not a link. The links are what's going to. And this guy's a link here. He's going to link to. Uh, I'm sorry. This guy's a link. He's going to link back to the main panel and home page. We got to do is we got to go back to devices find our channel code and drop it on there. As you can see, it lights it up, makes it available. All right, so then what we're going to do is we are going to go save. That's going to save our panel. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to pick it back up with my iPhone downstairs at the TV on the iPad, and then you'll actually see uh, the command work. Now, it's pretty anticlimactic, but uh, you see the, the, the magic, uh, you know, is behind the scenes with the I rule just really makes it really simple to implement this stuff. So again, I'm gonna pause it. I'll be back. 
Alright, so now that we got the um, uh, iRule configuration done, we're gonna down here, I'm gonna TV, I am uh, watching sci fi here. What we're gonna do is we are going to pull up iRule on the iPad. Alright, I gotta sync everything up. iPad here. Alright, we're there for now. Go back to panels. Main with my theater TV button as you can see. There's our HGTV button right there. Alright, so you can't both get both these guys in the same shot, but like I said, watching sci-fi. So I do hit that. Yeah, HGTV. So that's pretty much all there is to that. Uh, see you back upstairs. All right. So as you can see, not much to it. You just uh, update the, uh, the the panels and whatnot. Then you, you hit the button and it fires off. No problem. Uh, just real quick, I just wanted to show you what I have in terms of the configuration for um, my smart devices. So I use Global Cache devices. I use the Flex modules. Uh, they're the hardwired uh, Ethernet modules as opposed to the wireless. Um, I prefer wired where possible. You know, I have Enterprise Class Wireless in my house, so coverage is not an issue. Signal strength is not an issue. Throughput is not an issue. I just prefer uh, hardwired, if at all possible. It just keeps it deterministic. You know what you're going to get uh, from any you know given second. So I've got a couple of these guys. One I've got uh, with the the um, three port, uh, the tri port cable here, um, so that I can have an IR blaster hanging off of one, and then two IR transmitters. Here's an IR blaster, IR tra emitter cable here, and then I've got this guy. Here it's required for the RS-232 to be able to communicate. It's got the DB9 interface on the one end here and then the 3.5mm plug on the other. And I've actually got one other piece here, which is this one. It's an extension cable. So the EX-Link uh, interface on the back of the TV is the female. So you take the male end, plug it in there, and you extend this back into what I call the control center. Right. So this female plug then goes into the... Well, let's see here. Where am I? This female part would then go into the actual EX link module here, right? So this guy plugs into the female. This portion of the or this end of the DB9, the female, then will plug in to the male end here. Okay, so then that will give you your end-to-end -end connectivity for the RS-232. Um, you know, pretty simple stuff. So. I'm going to leave you to it. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to uh, you know, answer you know, as, as quickly as I can. Um, I'll probably do some more videos talking about uh, IP to IR, um, you know, different uh, ISCP control, different things like that. So that's where we're at today. So thanks for watching.